Hello everyone, it's Tori from Tori Story Creations, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet these cute ducks with animal hats. We'll learn how to make a duck with a froggy hat and a duck with a bear hat. Thank you so much to everyone who's requested this video. So many of you loved seeing these cute ducks in the backgrounds of my previous tutorials, so I hope that this tutorial will help you learn how to crochet your very own amigurumi ducks with animal hats. Before we get started, I also wanted to thank everyone for your continued love, support, and encouragement. We recently hit 30,000 subscribers on our channel. And yes, this is our channel because I couldn't have done any of this without you. So a big thank you to you all. I appreciate you so much. Your patience means the world to me as I work to upload more videos. So let's get back to the tutorial. As you can see here, I have two different size ducks. The small ducks on the left and the larger ducks on the right. The small duck is about 2.5 inches tall, so 6.3 centimeters tall, and 3.5 inches wide, around 8.9 centimeters wide, while the larger duck is about 4 inches tall, so 10.2 centimeters tall, and 5 inches wide, or 12.7 centimeters wide. These ducks were both made following the same pattern that I'm going to show you in this video tutorial, but I used a different yarn thickness and different crochet hook size to produce a different duck size. I'm going to use the thinner yarn in this video to produce one of these smaller ducks, but feel free to use any size yarn that you have with an appropriate size crochet hook. Just know that the size of your amigurumi duck will be different depending on the size of your crochet hook and the yarn thickness that you use. I'm going to put some materials in the description box below that list the yarn and crochet hook size that I used for the small duck versus the yarn and crochet hook size that I use for these larger ducks. So let's get started with the tutorial. For this tutorial, you're going to need the following materials. You're going to need the following colors of yarn. Yellow for the duck's body and wings, orange for the duck's beak and feet, green if you're going to make the frog hat for your duck, and brown if you're going to make the bear hat for your duck. Here I'm using acrylic yarn at a size 4, which is medium worsted weight yarn. You'll also need the following materials for this tutorial. A pair of scissors, a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook, a yarn needle, also called a darning needle or an embroidery needle, You'll use this yarn needle so that you can sew all of the pieces of your amigurumi together. Fiber fill stuffing to stuff your amigurumi. A pair of seven millimeter safety eyes. If you don't have access to safety eyes, you can also use black felt and a hot glue gun or fabric glue to glue the felt onto your amigurumi. You can use embroidery thread to embroider eyes onto your amigurumi, or you can use black beads or buttons to sew onto your amigurumi with a sewing needle and thread. Some materials that are optional but I highly recommend are sewing pins. I use sewing pins for pinning all of the pieces of my amigurumi together so I can get a better sense of what the final amigurumi will look like. Sewing pins also help keep all of the pieces into place as I sew so they don't move around. And a stitch marker. I use a stitch marker for keeping track of the first or last stitch of my round so I don't lose count. If you don't have a plastic stitch marker like me, you can also use a safety pin, paper clip, or a scrap piece of yarn. If you've decided to make a frog hat for this tutorial, you're going to also need the following materials. A pair of six millimeter safety eyes for the eyes of your frog hat, and black embroidery thread so you can sew on a smile to your frog hat. To get started, we're going to crochet the feet using our orange yarn. Our finished foot should look like this. You're going to want to crochet two of these. For row one, we're going to create a magic circle with six single crochets inside, and we'll finish that off with a slip stitch. Once we've completed row one, we should have a total of six stitches around. This will complete our foot. Before we get started, we're going to take note of the rectangle that forms between the knuckles of our pointer finger and our ring finger. So this rectangle right here. So we're going to want to grab the tail end of our yarn and hold it in place at the bottom corner of your rectangle closest to your palm using your thumb, just like this. Then we're going to place the yarn diagonally across to meet the top outer corner of our rectangle. 
Flip your hand over and pull the yarn straight across the top knuckles of your fingers. Then you're going to flip your hand over again and your yarn should be at the outer bottom corner of your rectangle. Now we'll pull our yarn diagonally across to meet the top inner corner of our rectangle. Right now you should see that the yarn forms an X. You'll flip your hand over one more time and you're going to place your yarn straight across the bottom knuckles of your fingers. Now flip it back over and you're going to take your yarn and you're going to put it between your ring finger and your pinky finger and hold it in place with your thumb just like you are with your yarn tail. So now you should have an X shape on the front of your fingers and on the back side you should have two parallel lines going across your knuckles. So now you're going to grab your crochet hook and we're going to insert our hook underneath the top outer corner of our X and then we're going to yarn over and hook onto that top inner corner of our X. Once we do that, we're going to pull that underneath the other side and you're going to kind of turn your hook so that you can get a nice loop around your hook. So now we're going to flip our hand over and we'll hook underneath the inner piece of yarn. And once you've done that, you're going to pull this piece of yarn underneath the loop that's on your hook. So if you need to, you can move your thumb and hold this in place. And you're going to just pull that under the loop that's already on our hook. And now you'll see that you'll still have just one loop around our hook, but there's more of like a slight knot where the rest of the yarn meets the hook. Okay, so now you're going to grab that small knot and we'll slide our fingers out. And what you should have is something that looks like this. So you should have your loop that's on your hook, your working yarn here that's connected to our yarn ball. You should see a circle and then your yarn tail. And your yarn tail might look like it's intertwined inside of your circle. So you can just pull that up to detangle it. And this is the start of our magic circle. So it's called a magic circle because if I grab the yarn tail, I should be able to pull on the circle and it will get smaller. Or I can pull the opposite way on the circle to make the loop a little bit bigger. So I'm going to leave the loop about this size. And what we're going to do is grab our working yarn and we're going to start creating our single crochets inside of our circle. And one thing that we're going to do while we do this is we're actually going to create our single crochets around both our yarn tail and the circle. So to create our single crochet, we're going to insert our hook inside of the circle. We'll yarn over with our working yarn. We'll pull that back up through the circle and we should have two loops around our hook. Next, we'll yarn over with our working yarn once more and we'll pull this through both loops around our hook. And now you can see we've created our first single crochet and it looks like this small V right here. And you should also notice that we've crocheted this single crochet around both our yarn tail and our circle. And the reason that I'm doing this is because it will help keep the yarn tail in place so that our circle doesn't open up later after we've completed our foot. So in general, it just makes it a little bit more sturdy. So now that we've completed our first single crochet, we're going to make five more single crochets inside of this circle. So again, I'll insert my hook inside of the circle. I'll yarn over with my working yarn. I'll pull that back up through the circle and I should have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over with my working yarn and I'll pull that through both of the loops around my hook. And that is my second single crochet. So I'll continue creating single crochets. That's my third. So for my fourth, we'll insert into the circle, yarn over, pull back up through the circle, yarn over again, and pull through both loops around the hook. So that completes the fourth. We'll do that again for the fifth. And then once more for the sixth single crochet. And now if you count, you can have one, two, 
three, four, five, six single crochets inside of your circle. So now you can take your yarn tail and it is time to tighten up our circle. So in order to do that, you'll just grab your yarn tail and you will hold on to your stitches and you can just pull this and you should see your loop closing up pretty easily. So you'll just keep pulling this until the loop is closed and it should have started to curl around to form a circle. So to finish off this row, we're going to create a slip stitch that connects the last stitch of our row to the first stitch of our row. So this stitch right here. And if you're having trouble finding your first stitch, you can count backwards. Six, five, four, three, two, one, to find your first stitch. So to create our slip stitch, we're going to insert our hook underneath the first stitch. And that is this full V here. You can insert your hook there. You're going to yarn over and you're going to pull this through all of the loops around our hook. So pull it through the stitch and the loop that was around our hook. And that completes our slip stitch. So now you can pull on your yarn tail and tighten up your circle a little bit more. At this point, we should have six stitches around and we're done with our foot. So get out your scissors and we're going to trim a yarn tail and you're going to want it to be decently long so that you can use this to sew the foot onto your duck. Once you've trimmed our working yarn, we're going to pull our hook so that we have a nice piece of yarn that we can use to sew this onto our duck. And you'll also see that we have our yarn tail here. What I'm going to do is trim this a little bit. So I'm going to get out my yarn needle and I'm going to thread the needle with my yarn tail. And just to hide this away, I'm going to stick this needle underneath a few of the stitches on the back side of my foot. So you can see this is a front side. You should be able to see a lot of the stitches that we created. And this is the back side. So you're just going to slip that through a few of those, and then we're going to trim off this tail. Once you've done that, you can flip over your foot, and now we've completed our duck's foot. Make sure to crochet a total of two of these. Next, we're going to crochet the beak for our duck using our orange yarn. Once we've completed the beak, it should look like this. So the first thing we're going to do is make a slip knot. To do this, we're going to take the tail end of our yarn and grab about seven or eight inches of yarn. And then we're going to drape this over the working end of our yarn to form a loop. Then we're going to take this tail end of our yarn again and fold it back behind the loop to form a pretzel shape. So you can lift the loop up and put the tail end behind that and you should get a pretzel shape. Make sure that the tail end of the yarn is underneath the loop that we initially created. So now we're going to grab our crochet hook and insert it down into the first loop of our pretzel. We're going to put our hook underneath that yarn tail and we're going to pull it up through the middle of our pretzel. Now before we pull it, you're going to want to secure in place with your fingers the yarn tail and our working yarn. So you can hold that in place and then we will pull this hook up through that middle of our pretzel. Okay, once it looks about here, you can grab your yarn tail and your working yarn together and you can tug that a little bit tighter. So now you should have a really big loop, a small knot, and our yarn tail and working yarn. So to close up this loop, we are going to grab our yarn tail and you're going to pull that. And as you pull, it should tighten up the loop around your hook. So once you finish those steps, your slip knot is complete. Now that we've completed our slip knot, it's time to start row one of our beak. For row one, we're going to chain four. So I'm going to grab my working yarn and I'm going to yarn over with my working yarn 
and I'm going to pull this through the loop that's on my hook. And that creates our first chain. You can see this small V here is one chain. So now we're going to do this three more times. So I'll yarn over, pull through the loop, that's two chains, yarn over, pull through the loop, that's our third chain, and yarn over and pull through that loop, that is our fourth chain. So if you look, you can see one, two, three, and four chains. For row two, we're going to start in the second chain from our hook. We'll single crochet in each of the first three stitches on the top side of our chain. We'll turn our work around and then we're going to single crochet on the other side of the chain three times. And then we'll also single crochet in this fourth stitch that we originally skipped on the top side. Once we've completed that, we should have a total of seven stitches around. So to get started, we're going to skip this first stitch that is closest to our hook, and we'll insert our hook in the top part of the V for our second stitch. And we'll be creating our single crochet, so we'll insert our hook, yarn over, pull that back up through the stitch. We should have two loops around our hook. We'll yarn over again, and we'll pull through to create our single crochet. So next I'm going to insert my hook in the next loop, yarn over, pull through. I should have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over and I'll pull through that to create our single crochet. I'll do that again with this last stitch in the top of our row. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull through. I should have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over and I'll pull through again to create our third single crochet. So at this point, your beak should look like this. So now what we're going to do is turn our work around and we're gonna work on the other side of our chain. So I'll insert my hook and I'm going to single crochet in the other side. You can see this is the next stitch that we're going to single crochet in. And then this is the third stitch we'll single crochet on that other side. And now you'll see that we have one little loop here. So this was the chain stitch that we skipped that was closest to our hook when we came around this side. So we're actually going to single crochet once in there as well. So I'll insert my hook in there. I'll yarn over, pull through. We're gonna yarn over and pull through. So now we've completed row two, and we should have a total of seven stitches around. So you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches. So we're almost done with our beak. We are going to trim this yarn to leave a tail. So get out your scissors, and we are going to trim this. And then we're going to hold on to the beak, and we'll pull our yarn through to create a nice tail. Next we're going to just prepare this so that it's ready for sewing. So get out your yarn needle and you are going to thread your needle using that piece of yarn that we just trimmed. So once your needle is threaded we're going to insert our hook in the outer crack of this beak to come out the other side. So the back side. And we'll pull that through, give it a slight tug, and that way we can use both of these tails to attach and sew the beak onto our duck. And now we've completed crocheting the beak for our duck. Next we're going to crochet the wings of our duck using our yellow yarn. This is what a finished wing looks like. It is flat on top and rounded at the bottom. You're going to want to make two of these. For row one, we're going to create a magic circle with six single crochets inside. We'll slip stitch to complete our circle. Once we've completed row one, we should have a total of six stitches around. So for our circle, we're going to grab our yarn tail. Again, we're going to be working with the rectangle that forms between our knuckles of our ring finger and our pointer finger. 
So we're going to hold our yarn tail in place at the bottom inner corner of our rectangle. We'll bring our yarn across to meet the top outer corner of our rectangle. We'll flip our hands over. We'll bring our yarn straight across the top knuckles of our fingers. Flip our hand over again and we should be at the bottom outer corner of our rectangle. We're going to pull this yarn across to meet the top inner corner of our rectangle and that should create an X shape. We'll flip our hand over again, pull our yarn straight across the bottom knuckles of our fingers, and then we are going to hold it in place between our pinky and ring finger with our thumb. So we should have our X on the front of our fingers and two parallel lines on the back of our fingers against our knuckles. So now we're going to take our crochet hook we will insert our hook underneath the top outer corner of our X, and then we are going to hook on to the top inner corner of our X. We'll pull that underneath the other loop. We'll twist our hook, and we should have one loop around our hook. So next we are going to flip our hand over just a little bit so that we can hook underneath the inner piece of yarn, and then we're going to pull this through the loop that's on our hook. We can slide our fingers out of the loop and we should have one loop around our hook, a small knot close to our hook. We have our working yarn and we can see that there's this big circle and our yarn tail is a little bit tangled so we can untangle that and we should be able to adjust our circle. And once you've confirmed that it can move and be adjusted, we are going to start creating the single crochets inside of our circle. So we'll create six single crochets. And again, like we did earlier, I'm going to single crochet around both the yarn tail and the circle. So I'll insert my hook inside of the circle. I'll yarn over. I'll pull that back up through the circle. I should have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over and I will pull through both loops around my hook. So that completes our first single crochet. So we're going to make five more single crochets inside of our circle. So again, I'll insert my hook inside of the circle. I'll yarn over. I'll pull that back up through the circle. I'll have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over again and pull through both of those loops. So that's our second single crochet. And I'll just continue repeating this process until I have a total of six. That's three. four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six stitches. So now you can untangle your yarn tail if it's at all tangled. And we're going to tighten our circle by pulling on our yarn tail. So move your yarn tail towards the back and we can see that since we've closed our loop it starts to form a circle shape. So next we're going to slip stitch to connect the last stitch of our circle to the first stitch of our circle. So we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch of our circle. We will yarn over with our working yarn and then we're going to pull this through all of the loops that were on our hook. And that is our slip stitch. So now we've completed row one and we should have a total of six stitches around. For row two, we're going to increase in the first four stitches of our row. Once we've completed row two, we should have a total of 10 stitches around. So to increase, we're going to create two single crochets in one stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch. I'll yarn over. I'll pull that back up through the stitch. I should have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over again and I'll pull that through both of the loops. So you can see that we've created one single crochet inside of our stitch. So to complete our increase, we're going to create one more single crochet inside that same stitch. So I'll insert my hook back into that same stitch that we did earlier. 
I'll yarn over and I'll pull through that stitch again. So I should have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over and I will pull through. So now we created two single crochets in one stitch. So that is our first increase of our row. So we're going to increase three more times. So I'll create one single crochet in this next stitch and then I'll insert my hook again and create another single crochet into that same stitch. So that's our second increase. I'll do that again for the next stitch. So one single crochet inside, insert back into that same stitch and create another single crochet. So that completes our third increase. And then our fourth increase, we'll insert into the next stitch and we will single crochet twice in that one stitch. So now we've completed four increases around our row. So to finish off this row, we are going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And I'm going to tighten up my circle a little bit. And now we've completed row two of our wings. We should have a total of 10 stitches around. Don't worry about the other few stitches that we haven't crocheted in this row. Our wings are meant to be round at the bottom and then straight at the top where we're going to sew onto our deck. So now we're going to cut our yarn and leave a long tail for sewing this onto our deck. Cut the tail and then you're going to pull your hook and pull that yarn through. So we'll use this piece of yarn for sewing the wing onto our deck. But you'll notice that we still have the tail from when we originally created our magic circle. So what I like to do with this is I like to grab my yarn needle and I'll thread that yarn tail. And just to make sure that the circle doesn't open up later on, I do want to secure this piece of yarn inside some of the stitches on the back side of our wing. So the back side of our wing is where you can see that the tail comes out. If you flip it over, your front side of your wing should have a nice little circle and some nice ridges where we have our stitches. So I'm going to insert my needle underneath a few stitches on the back of this wing. It doesn't have to be too many. So I'll insert it there. And then I'm just going to create a small knot. So I'll insert under one stitch that's really close to where my yarn came out. And I'll pull through. Once I have a small loop though, I'm going to insert my hook through that loop and pull tightly so that I create a knot. And this just guarantees that this magic circle is not going to open up later on and create a hole. So once I have this knot, again, I'm going to go back underneath this wing and find a few stitches to pull this through so that I can hide the yarn tail. And then I will get out my scissors and I'm just going to trim this yarn tail really close so that you don't see any piece of yarn hanging out. So now if you flip the wing over, you can see that we have one yarn tail left that we are going to use to sew onto our duck later. And we've completed our duck's wing. Make sure that you crochet a total of two of these. Now we're going to crochet the body of our duck. Our completed duck body should look like this. For row one, we're going to create a magic circle with six single crochets inside. We'll finish off our circle with a slip stitch to connect the last stitch to the first stitch of our row. Once we've completed row one, we should have a total of six stitches around. So to get started with our magic circle, we're going to take note of the rectangle that forms between our ring finger and our pointer finger. We're going to grab our yarn and hold our yarn tail in place using our thumb at the bottom inner corner of our rectangle. We're going to take our yarn and we're going to pull that across our fingers to reach the top outer knuckle of our rectangle. We'll flip our hand over and we'll pull this straight across the top knuckles of our fingers. We'll flip our hand over once more and we should be at the outer bottom knuckle. 
Next, we're going to take this piece of yarn and we're going to bring it across to form an X on our fingers. And that should reach the top inner corner of our rectangle. We'll flip our hand over once more and we will bring this yarn parallel to the other piece of yarn directly across the bottom knuckles of our fingers. Flip your hand over again and hold that in place with your thumb. So we should have an X on the front of our fingers and we should have two parallel lines on the back of our fingers. So once you have this, we're going to grab our crochet hook and we are going to insert it underneath the top outer corner of our X. Then we're going to reach over with our hook and hook onto the top inner corner of our X. We're going to pull this underneath our yarn and we're going to twist it so that we have one loop around our hook. Then if you rotate your fingers so that we can see the yarn that's on the back of our fingers, you are going to insert your hook underneath the piece of yarn that is closest to your knuckles. And then we're going to pull that through the loop that's on our hook already. Pull that through. So now you should have one loop around the hook and then a small knot close to the hook. So now we're going to grab that knot and you can slide your fingers out from the loops. So here we should have one loop around our hook, our working yarn, and we're going to pull that up here. And we should have a circle and our yarn tail. So we can pull our yarn tail if it's a little bit tangled away from our circle. And you can test out your magic circle by pulling on your yarn tail and seeing if it closes. So if it's able to start closing, then you know that it is a good magic circle. And then we can pull it back out to make the loop of our circle a little bit bigger so that we can make single crochets inside. So now that we have our circle established, we're going to create six single crochets inside of our circle. So like we've been doing before, we're going to make sure that we create our single crochets around both our yarn tail and the loop of our circle. So I'll insert my hook inside the center of the circle I'll yarn over with my working yarn. I'll pull that back up through the circle and I should have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over and I'll pull through both loops around my hook. So that is our first single crochet. So again, we'll insert our hook inside of the circle, yarn over with our working yarn, pull that back up through the circle. We should have two loops around our hook. We'll yarn over and pull through both loops around our hook. That is our second single crochet. So I'll keep repeating this until I have a total of six single crochets. So we have our third single crochet, our fourth single crochet, our fifth, and sixth. So you can count one, two, three, four, five, and six single crochets inside of our circle. So now it's time to tighten up the circle. So find your yarn tail again, and you can untangle it. And we're going to pull this yarn tail until this loop closes up completely. So we pull it, and you can see that our single crochets curl up to start to form our circle. And we can see that our circle is almost done. You're going to finish this off by creating a slip stitch to connect the last stitch of our circle to the first stitch of our circle. So it creates a perfect circle shape in the end. So I'll insert my hook into the first stitch of our row and I will yarn over. And for our slip stitch, we are going to pull through all of the loops around our hook. So I'll pull through the stitch and the loop around my hook. And now we've completed row one of our body. And we should have a total of six stitches around. So before we get started with row two, I'm going to grab my stitch marker and use this to keep track of the last stitch of every row. You don't have to do this, this is totally optional, but it helps me personally keep track of when I reach the end of my row so that if my stitch count isn't what I expect by the time I get to the end of my row, then I know that I've made a mistake. 
So I'm going to use this stitch marker that I got at the craft store, but if you don't have one of these, you can use a scrap piece of yarn, a paper clip, or even a bobby pin. So I like to just stick this underneath the last stitch in my row just to keep count. So for row two, we're going to increase in each stitch around our circle. Once we've completed row two, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So to increase, we're going to create two single crochets in each stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into my first stitch. I'll yarn over, pull through. I'll have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over and I will pull through. To complete my increase, I'm going to insert my hook back into that same stitch and create another single crochet. So I'll yarn over, pull through, I'll have two loops around my hook, I'll yarn over, and pull through. So now we've completed our first increase by creating two single crochets in one stitch. So I'm going to repeat this process again. So I'll create one single crochet in the next stitch and I'll insert my hook back into that stitch and create another single crochet. So that is my second increase. So I'm going to keep repeating this until I get all the way around to my last stitch. So this is our third increase. Fourth increase. increase and then I will take out my stitch marker. I know this is my last stitch so I'll create my last increase in the last stitch of our row. And once we've completed row two we should have a total of 12 stitches around. For row three, we're going to single crochet in the first stitch, and then we're going to increase in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern five more times until we reach the end of our row. Once we've completed row three, we should have a total of 18 stitches around. So I'll single crochet in the first stitch, and then I'm going to increase in the next stitch. That's two single crochets in the same stitch. And now I'm going to repeat this pattern. So I'll create a single crochet. And then I'll create an increase. I'll single crochet. Increase. and keep repeating the single crochet increase until I've reached the end of my row. So once you've completed row three, you should have a total of 18 stitches around. For row four, we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches, and then we're going to increase in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern five more times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've finished row four, we should have a total of 24 stitches around. So I'll single crochet, first stitch, single crochet in the second stitch, and then increase. I'll repeat that. I'll single crochet, single crochet, and increase. Single crochet, single crochet, and increase. And I'll keep repeating this for the rest of my row. Once 
once you've completed row 4, you should have a total of 24 stitches around. For row 5, we're going to single crochet in the first 3 stitches, and then we're going to increase in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern 5 more times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 5, we should have a total of 30 stitches around. So I'll single crochet in the first stitch, second stitch, third stitch, and then I'll increase in the next stitch. So that will be two single crochets in that one stitch. And I'll repeat this pattern, so I'll single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then increase in the next stitch. Single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then increase. And then I'll keep repeating this until I've reached the end of my row. Once you've completed row 5, you should have a total of 30 stitches around. For row 6, we're going to single crochet in the first 4 stitches, and then we're going to increase in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern 5 more times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 6, we should have a total of 36 stitches around. So we'll single crochet. 1, single crochet two, single crochet three, single crochet four, and then in this next stitch we'll increase. So we'll create two single crochets in that one stitch. Then we'll repeat this pattern. So we'll single crochet one, single crochet two, single crochet three, single crochet four, and then we'll increase in the next stitch. And then we'll repeat this pattern. So we'll single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and increase all the way to the end of our row. Once you've completed row 6, you should have a total of 36 stitches around. For rows 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, so for the next 6 rows, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around our circle. Once we've completed each of these 6 rows, we should have a total of 36 stitches around. So for 6 rows, I'm going to single crochet in each stitch around. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, I'll yarn over again and pull through both loops around my hook. And I'll continue single crocheting for a total of six rows.
Once you've completed crocheting all six rows of single crochets, so rows 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, your duck body should look like this. And you should have a total of 36 stitches around. So at this point in the tutorial, we're going to pause crocheting for right now, and we're going to attach our safety eyes and sew on our beak to our duck. First, we're going to place the safety eyes onto our duck. You're going to want to grab out one pair of seven millimeter safety eyes, including their backings. If you don't have safety eyes available to you, there are a few options that you can use instead of safety eyes. For example, you can sew on small black beads or black buttons onto your duck. You can also get some black felt and fabric glue or hot glue and cut out small circles from the felt and glue them onto your duck. But I'm going to move forward with safety eyes for this tutorial. So we're going to grab our first eye and we're going to place our eye between rows nine and 10. So I'm going to count from the top of the duck on our first row and I'm going to count down to row nine and 10. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this would be our 10th row. So I'm going to place my safety eye between rows 9 and 10. I'm going to stick it in there and push it through. And then for this first eye, I'm just going to grab my backing and I am going to secure it onto my deck. Okay. Now it's time to place our second safety eye onto our deck. We're going to place our second safety eye still between rows 9 and 10, but about 8 stitches apart from our first safety eye. So to do this, I like to count all of the little holes here to get the correct spot. So I will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So then I'll stick my safety eye in that stitch. So once I've placed my second safety eye about eight stitches apart from my first safety eye, I'm going to attach the backing to secure the safety eye onto my duck. So I'm just going to push it on. Then I like to push it back just to make sure that it's secure. And now we've successfully placed both safety eyes onto our duck. So now that we've attached the safety eyes onto our duck, it's time to sew on the beak that we crocheted earlier on in this tutorial. So looking at our beak, you'll notice that the bottom side is a little bit shorter than the top side of our beak. So on the bottom side of our beak, we should have one, two, three single crochets, and the top side of our beak has one, two, three, four single crochets. And this is just my personal preference on how to place the beak, but I prefer to have the longer side on top and then the smaller side of the beak on the bottom. So once you decided which side you want on top and which side you want on bottom, we're going to grab our duck and we're going to sew the beak on between rows 9 and 10 just like we placed our safety eyes. So we're going to place it right about here on our duck. So now we're going to grab out our yarn needle so that we can start sewing this on. So I like to thread my needle with one of the yarn tails. And sewing this on, I'm going to skip this first stitch and I'm going to insert my yarn needle in the second hole between rows 9 and 10. And pull that all the way through. And then at this point, I'm going to unthread my yarn and I'm going to grab the other yarn tail that's connected to the other side of the beak and I'll thread my yarn needle with that tail. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'll count one hole, one stitch here, and then I'm going to insert my hook in this second stitch between rows nine and 10. I'm going to pull that through to the inside of the body 
And now we can see that we have a general placement of our beak. So now that we have both yarn tails securing the beak into place, we're going to just continue to sew the beak on so it's nice and sturdy. So you might have to fold your duck a little bit to get this, but I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch. I'm going to pull this up outside. You can flip your beak around and you can see that there's a few stitches here. So I like to just hook on to those stitches. Yes, and then we are going to just use those to sew our beak into place. And then I'll move to the next stitch in here. Weave that across underneath. And then I'm going to insert my hook in another stitch. And again, I'm going to try to flip my beak a little bit so that I can get it underneath one of these stitches in the middle of my beak. Okay, and then I'll insert my hook back in my beak and I'm just gonna go all the way across to maybe about this length. So once I'm about here, I'm going to say that that looks about good and you, our beak is pretty tight. So I'm going to unthread this needle and I'm going to grab this other yarn tail that I have here. So we're just going to go back and forth and I'll thread this needle. So once I threaded my needle with the other piece of yarn tail that we haven't sewn our beak on with yet, I'm going to pull this and then I'm going to insert my needle into the next stitch, which this happens to be one where we just came out of with the other yarn tail. And then for this one, I'm going to, again, try to turn my beak so that I can see the back side of it. And I'm going to hook underneath one of the stitches here. And this is just so that we can make sure that we're securing the beak into place. So I'll come out there and then I'm just going to insert my needle. For this one, I'm just gonna go back into the corner and I'm going to pull that pretty tight. If I turn my work around at this point, you can see that I have attached the beak and it's pretty sturdy. And then on this end, you can see that I've generally sewed across from one side to the other side and secured the beak into place. So now I'm going to take my needle and I'll just take it off of my yarn. And for this, since it's on the inside of our duck, I'm just going to take these two pieces of yarn tail and I'm going to tie a knot with them. And this is how I'm going to fasten it off. I'll just tie a knot. And once I've tied a knot, I'll get out my scissors and I'll just trim the yarn tails. And now if I flip this back over, you can see that we have our beak now sewn on to our duck and our safety eyes also put into place. Once you've completed these steps, we're going to continue crocheting the rest of our duck's body. For row 13, we're going to single crochet for the first four stitches, and then we're going to decrease in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern five more times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 13, we should have a total of 30 stitches around. So we'll single crochet in the first four stitches. So we have one, two, three, and four. And now we're going to decrease in the next stitch. To decrease, we're going to single crochet two stitches together. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch. I'll yarn over. I'll pull my hook back up through that stitch and then I'll insert my hook into the next stitch. I'll yarn over and pull my hook back up through that stitch and I should have a total of three loops around my hook. 
Then I'm going to yarn over with my working yarn and pull my hook through all three of those loops. And that single crochets two stitches together and forms our decrease. So I'll continue repeating this pattern. So I'll single crochet one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to decrease. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. I'll have three loops around my hook. I'll yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. So that's our decrease. So I'll keep repeating this. One, two, three, four, and then decrease. So stitching two stitches together. Then we'll single crochet one, two, three, and four, and we'll decrease and single crochet two stitches together. And I'll keep repeating this until I get to the end of my row. Once I've completed row 13, I should have a total of 30 stitches around, and my duck should start looking like this. You'll notice that now that we've started decreasing, that the duck's body is getting a little bit smaller. For row 14, we're going to single crochet in the first three stitches, and then we're going to decrease in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern five more times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 14, we should have a total of 24 stitches around. So we'll single crochet in the first three stitches. So that's one, two, three, and then we'll decrease in the next stitch. So we'll insert our hook, yarn over, pull through our stitch, insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch. We'll have three loops around our hook. We'll yarn over and we'll pull through all three of those loops to form our decrease. So we'll keep repeating this pattern. We'll single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then decrease. So crocheting two stitches together. And we'll repeat that, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and decrease. And we'll keep repeating that until we get to the end of our row. Once you've completed row 14, you should have a total of 24 stitches around and your duck should look like this. For row 15, we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches and then we'll decrease in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern five more times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 15, we should have a total of 18 stitches around. So we'll single crochet in our first stitch in the second stitch and then now we're going to decrease so we'll insert our hook into the next stitch we'll yarn over pull that back up through the stitch we'll have two loops around our hook we'll insert our hook into the next stitch yarn over pull through that stitch and we should have three loops around our hook we'll yarn over again and pull through all three loops so then we'll single crochet single crochet, decrease, we'll 
single single crochet single crochet and decrease and we'll keep repeating this until we finish our row Once we finish row 15, we should have a total of 18 stitches around. So now I'm going to pause and I'm actually going to take my hook out and I'm going to start stuffing the inside of my duck with fiber fill. So you're just going to grab your stuffing and fill your duck up. And you're going to probably use a surprisingly large amount of stuffing because you'll want to make sure that your amigurumi duck is really firm and stuffed very well. Once your duck is stuffed pretty full and is looking much more round, we can add back our stitch marker if you've been using one and continue crocheting. For row 16, we're going to single crochet in the first stitch and then we'll decrease in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern five more times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row 16, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So we'll single crochet in our first stitch. And then we're going to decrease in the next. And then we'll single crochet. and decrease single crochet and decrease And we'll keep repeating this until we've reached the end of our row. Once you finish row 16, you should have a total of 12 stitches around. As we continue to close up our duck, feel free to add more stuffing if you need to keep your duck a round shape. For row 17, we're going to decrease all the way around our row, so a total of six times. Once we've completed row 17, we should have a total of six stitches around. I'm just going to decrease all the way around my row. Once you've completed row 17, you should have a total of six stitches around. So now it's time to fasten off and sew the remaining hole closed. So what I like to do before fastening off is create a slip stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch. I'll yarn over and I'll pull this through all of the loops around my hook. So up through that stitch and then also pull it straight through the loop that was on my hook. And that completes my slip stitch. So now I'm going to get out my scissors and I'm going to trim a tail. Then I'm going to grab my duck and my hook. I'm going to yank my hook so that the tail comes through my stitch. Now you can see I'm left with this small hole right here. Get out your yarn needle and thread your yarn needle with the yarn tail. We're going to use this to sew 
the hole closed. So if you look closely, you can see our stitches. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So to sew this closed, we're going to hook on to the outer edge of our stitch. So just this outer loop. So I'm going to insert my yarn needle through that and I'll pull that through. And then I'm going to insert my yarn needle back through this other loop on the outside. I'm gonna keep going through all my stitches. This is our third one, our fourth one, our fifth one, and our sixth one, if I can get this, there we go. And then in order to close this, you're just going to yank on the yarn tail and it should close up the circle very nicely. So you can give it a nice little tug. And then we're going to fasten this off by inserting our yarn needle underneath a piece of yarn that's in our duck. So probably close by where our yarn tail is coming out. We'll just hook underneath one of these pieces of yarn. And before we pull this all the way through, we can see we have a small loop. We'll insert our yarn needle through that loop and we'll pull this to create a small knot. We can tug it tighter and then that just fastens it off so that the circle that we just closed doesn't open up later on. And then you can insert your needle inside of your duck and I like to push it all the way through to the other side. We're going to pull this through so you won't see it on this bottom side. And if you give it a good tug and hold it in place with your fingers, you can get out your scissors and we're going to cut this. And then we can't see the piece of yarn tail where we cut because it went right back into our amigurumi and is hidden from view. So now you can see we have a nice clean bottom and our amigurumi duck body is complete. Now that we've finished crocheting all of the pieces of our duck, it's time to sew the pieces together. So we'll start off by sewing the wings onto our duck. So to get started sewing our wings onto our duck, we're going to grab one of our wings and also grab our yarn needle. Using our tail end of our wing, we're going to thread the needle. Once your needle is threaded, we're going to find rows 9 and 10 of the body. So that would be this row and this row. And we're going to sew our wing right in between those rows across these stitches. And you'll notice that this is a similar placement that we have for our beak and our safety eyes, which are also between rows 9 and 10. So to get started, we're going to insert our hook about three stitches away from our eye. So you'll see this hole here is one. We'll skip that. We have two. We'll skip that and we'll insert our needle in this third hole. So you'll insert your needle in there. And you're going to pull that tight. And then you're going to identify the next stitch on your wing. So we're going to sew across this flat part so that the flat part of the wing is attached to the body. And then we have this little round wing shape that's going to be detached from the body. So you'll notice that we have about one, two, three, maybe this corner four stitches to sew across on this body to keep it in place. So I'm going to insert my needle in this next stitch next to where our tail comes out of. So that you can see this V, so we're going to insert it there and pull through. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to find the next stitch that we haven't used yet, so the one right next to where we originally inserted into, and I'm going to insert my hook there on the body, and I'll pull that tight, and then I'll find the next stitch on the wing, and I'll insert my hook under that, and I'll pull my needle through. And we're going to follow this pattern of hooking onto a piece of the body with our needle and pulling that through, and then finding the next stitch on our wing that we need to connect to the body 
put our needle through and pull that. And then we're going to keep doing this until we get to the end of our wing. So I'm actually going to do this one more time just to make sure things are secure. And this will just secure that wing right onto the body. And so with this one, this last one, I'll hook onto this edge here with my needle. And then we can see that the flat part of our wing is connected to the body of our duck. So now that we've done that, I'm going to flip this over so we have the bottom of our wing and the underside of our duck's wing. And we are going to insert our needle underneath one of the stitches right nearby, so probably this one actually. And I'm going to insert it underneath a couple of them. I'm just going to pull that through. And now we're going to fasten this off and secure it using a small knot. So I'll hook underneath one of those stitches that I just did earlier. And I'll pull this through, but not all the way. Once I have a small loop, pull that little tail through. So once I have a small loop, I'll make sure that my yarn is coming through the loop. So actually this one is already coming through the loop and I'll pull this and this will create a small knot so that my sewing won't undo. And then I'm going to insert my needle right next to that stitch where we just had our knot and out another part of the body. And I'll just pull that. And now you can see that it's clean underneath the wing and we can't necessarily see where we had sewn this. And then we have this piece of yarn coming out of the body. So now I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to trim this. So I'll pull this a little bit tight so it has some sort of a tension on it. And then I'll trim right next to the body. And then that piece of yarn will have contracted back into the body and it's hidden from view. And now we have a nice clean wing sewn on to our duck's body. Once you've sewn the first wing onto your duck's body, you're going to want to grab the other wing and sew it in place using the same method. You're going to want to make sure that this is about two stitches distance from the eye. Once you've completed sewing both wings onto your duck, it should look like this. Now it's time to sew the feet onto our duck. So grab one of your feet, and we're also going to grab our duck, and we're going to find the placement of where the foot should go. So we're going to find our duck eye, and we're going to count three rows down. So we have one, two, three. And this should be our 13th row. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold in place our foot starting at row 13 and it will also cover about row 14 and 15. So you're going to hold this in place and you're also going to want to make sure that the foot is placed below the eye. You can see it's below the eye. And once you like the placement of your foot, I recommend grabbing out a sewing pin if you have one and just placing it in the center of your foot and this will just keep it in place while we sew around this. If you don't have a sewing pin, you can also just hold the foot in place with your other hand as you sew around. So once we like the placement of our foot, we're going to get out our yarn needle and thread our needle with the tail from our foot. So I'll thread this needle. And now we're going to start sewing around this circle so that we can keep our foot in place. So to get started, I'm going to insert my yarn needle in this stitch right here. So this is the closest one to where my yarn tail is coming out of, and it's actually attached to that yarn tail. So I'm going to insert my needle there, and I'm just going to pull this back up through the body and a place that would be underneath the foot. So we don't want this to show. So I'll just pull this up and pull the yarn tail through. And we're inside the body right now. As you can see, I'll lift this up a little bit. So now I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to insert it in the next stitch over on the foot. So I'll insert it up there and pull that through. And then I'm going to insert my needle over one to the next stitch of the foot 
and I'm going to pull that down and then I'm going to insert my needle through the body and I'm going to try to come up through the body at around where this stitch meets the body. So if you look, I will try to insert my needle close to where it is currently on the body. And then I'll go over about a stitch and I'll pull that through. At this point, we've made a few stitches, so my foot's kind of secure, so I'm going to take this pin out because it's getting in my way a little bit. So you can see that I came back up through the body right here. So now I'm going to insert my needle through this stitch. And then I'm going to go over one and pull that through. So then I'm going to insert my needle where this piece of yarn tail meets the body. So around here, I'm going to go over one stitch and I'll pull that through. And then I'm going to insert my needle up through this stitch. And then I'm going to go over one stitch and pull that tight. I'm getting close to where I originally started sewing. So I'm going to connect this side of the foot so I'm going to insert my needle through a piece of the body and over a stitch and pull that through. And now I'm going to tie a little knot to secure the foot onto our duck. So I'm going to find where we originally went through for our sewing and I'm just going to insert my needle through that and I'll pull through and then I'm going to go back again through that little piece of yarn and I'm going to pull this through but not all the way. We are going to keep one loop around here so that I can insert my needle back through this loop and create a knot. So just a generic knot shape and then I'm going to insert my needle right where that stitch is and pull that all the way through to the other side of my duck. And I'll pull this tight. And now we're going to trim this end. And you'll notice that after I trimmed this, uh, since I didn't pull the yarn very tight, the yarn didn't go back into the body. So if this ever happens to you, you can just take the back of your yarn needle or your crochet hook and you can just push it down and push it back in and then it disappears from view. So now we've sewn the first foot onto our duck. You're going to want to grab your other foot and sew it in a similar area but underneath the second eye around rows 13 through 15 following the same steps that we did with the first foot. Once you've finished sewing both feet onto your duck it should look something like this. The next portion of the tutorial, we're going to start adding the hats to our duck. So if you decide that you don't want to add any hats to your duck, then you can leave your duck as is. And congratulations, you're done with this tutorial and you have your own very literal tiny duck. Thank you so much for following the tutorial and I hope to see you next time. For those of you sticking around, let's get started on the hats. Now we're going to crochet the base of our hat for our duck. If you're crocheting the froggy hat, you're going to want to use green yarn. If you're crocheting the bear hat, you're going to want to use brown yarn. This is what our finished frog base hat and bear base hat should look like. For row one, we're going to create a magic circle with six single crochets inside. We'll finish off row one with a slip stitch connecting the last stitch of our row to the first stitch of our row. Once we've completed row one, we should have a total of six stitches around. So to get started with our magic circle, we're going to take note of the rectangle that forms between our pointer finger and the ring finger. So specifically the knuckles that form the rectangle. So we're going to grab our yarn tail and we're going to hold it in place with our thumb at the bottom inner corner of our rectangle. We'll grab our working yarn and we're going to pull it diagonally across to meet the top outer corner of our rectangle. We'll flip over our hand and we're going to bring our yarn straight across the top knuckles of our fingers. We'll flip our hand over again 
and our yarn should be in the bottom outer corner of our rectangle. We'll pull the yarn diagonally across to meet the top inner corner of our rectangle. You should see right now that our yarn forms an X shape on the front of our fingers. Flip your hand over once more and you're going to take your yarn and drag it across the bottom knuckles of our fingers. We'll flip our hand over once more and we're going to bring this piece of yarn between our pinky and ring finger and hold it in place with our thumb. At this point, you should have an X on the front side of your fingers and on the back side of your fingers, you should have two parallel lines. So now we're going to get out our crochet hook and we're going to insert our hook underneath the top outer corner of our X. We'll hook onto the top inner corner of our X and we'll pull that underneath the yarn that we originally went under. We're going to rotate our hook and turn this upwards so that we have one loop around our hook. So now we'll rotate our fingers so that we can see the back side of our fingers and we'll hook underneath the piece of yarn that is closest to our knuckles on our hand. Then we're going to pull this through the loop that's around our hook. You should continue to have one loop around your hook at this point, but you'll also see that a small knot formed close to your hook. So we're going to grab that knot and we're going to slide our fingers out from our loop. At this point, you can find your working yarn and you can bring it towards the top. You should see that we have our working yarn here our loop around our hook, a small knot next to our hook, and then you should see that we have our yarn tail and another circle. We're going to pull our yarn tail so that it's not tangled up in that circle. And then this is our magic circle. So we can test out a magic circle by pulling our yarn tail a bit, and we should see the circle start to get smaller. If you want to make your circle bigger, you can just pull the opposite direction on your loop, so towards you, and it should make your loop a little bit bigger. So once you've gotten this far, we're going to start making our single crochets inside of our magic circle. So as we make our single crochets, we're going to make them around both the circle and our yarn tail. So for example, we'll create our first single crochet inside of our circle. So we'll insert our hook in the circle, yarn over with our working yarn, pull that back up through the circle, we'll have two loops around our hook, we we'll yarn over again and pull that through both loops around our hook. And that creates our first single crochet in our circle. So now we're going to continue and create five more single crochets in our circle. So that's two, three, four, five, and one more so that we have a total of six single crochets in our circle. So once you have your six stitches, it's time to tighten the circle. So find your yarn tail, and we're going to hold on to the stitches part of our circle, and we're going to give this a big tug. And this will tighten that loop of our circle, and you should see that the stitches curled around to form a circular shape. So to finish off this row, we're going to slip stitch to connect the last stitch of our row to the first stitch of our row. So to slip stitch, we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch. We'll yarn over, and then we'll pull this through everything that's around our hook. So our stitch and the loop. Once you've completed row one, you should have a total of six stitches around. For row two, we're going to increase in each stitch around our circle. Once we've completed row two, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So to increase, we're going to insert our hook into our stitch and create one single crochet. And then we're going to insert our hook back into that same stitch and single crochet again. So we're creating two single crochets in one stitch to create our increase. So I'm going to do this five more times until I've reached the end of my row. So that is our second increase. Our third increase. Our fourth 
increase. Our fifth increase and our sixth increase. Once you've completed row two, you should have a total of 12 stitches around. So before we go any further, we're going to take this time to secure our magic circle so it doesn't open up later on and trim our yarn tail. So what we're going to do first is grab our yarn tail and pull it tight so that our magic circle closes up as much as it can. We'll see now it looks a little bit tighter. So flip it to the back side and we're going to take our yarn tail and get out our yarn needle. We'll thread our needle with our yarn tail and then we're going to hook our needle underneath a nearby stitch and we're going to pull this all the way through that stitch. Then we're going to come back around and insert it once more into that same stitch and we're going to pull this, but don't pull it all the way through. We're going to leave a small loop. You're going to insert your needle through that loop to create a knot. And this will secure the yarn tail so that our magic circle doesn't open up later on. Next, you're going to take your needle and hook under a few stitches on this back side. And we're going to pull this through. And then you can get out your scissors and we're going to trim this yarn tail right next to where this came out from those few stitches. And now we can see our yarn tail is out of our way and we can continue crocheting. For row three, we're going to single crochet in the first stitch and then we're going to increase in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern five more times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row three, we should have a total of 18 stitches around. So we'll start off with single crocheting in the first stitch. And then I'll increase in the next stitch. So our increase is two single crochets in this same stitch. So I'll create one single crochet. I'll insert my hook back in that same stitch and create another single crochet. And that completes our increase. So I'll repeat this pattern of one single crochet and then increase. So two single crochets in that one stitch single crochet, increase, and I'll keep repeating this all the way around until I reach the end of my row. Once you've completed row three, you should have a total of 18 stitches around. For row four, we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches, and then we'll increase in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern five more times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row four, we should have a total of 24 stitches around. So I'll single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet in the second stitch, and then increase in the next stitch. And I'll repeat this pattern, so single crochet, single crochet, and increase, single crochet, single crochet, increase, and I'll continue this all the way around until I've reached the end of my row. Once you've completed row four, you should have a total of 24 stitches around. For row five, we're going to single crochet in the first three stitches, and then we'll increase in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern five more times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've completed row five, we should have a total of 30 stitches around. So I'll single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet in the second stitch, single crochet in the third stitch, and then we'll increase in this fourth stitch. 
So two single crochets in that one stitch. And then I'll keep repeating this pattern. So single crochet one, single crochet two, single crochet three, and increase. Single crochet one, single crochet two, single crochet three, and increase. And I'll keep repeating this pattern until I reach the end of my row. Once we've completed row 5, we should have a total of 30 stitches around. For row 6, we're going to single crochet in the first 4 stitches, and then we'll increase in the next stitch. We'll repeat this pattern 5 more times until we reach the end of our row. Once we've completed row 6, we should have a total of 36 stitches around. So we'll single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet in the second stitch, single crochet in the third stitch, and single crochet in the fourth stitch. And then we're going to increase in the next stitch. And we'll keep repeating that. So we'll single crochet one, single crochet two, single crochet three, single crochet four, and increase. Single crochet one, single crochet two, single crochet three, single crochet four, and increase. And we'll repeat this until we reach the end of our row. Once we've completed row 6, we should have a total of 36 stitches around. For rows 7, 8, and 9, so for the next 3 rows, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around our circle. So 36 stitches will single crochet for each row. Once we've completed row 9, we should have a total of 36 stitches around. So we're just going to keep single crocheting in each stitch around our row for three rows. Once you've completed rows 7, 8, and 9, your hat should look like this, and you should have 36 stitches around. So now we're going to finish off our hat with a slip stitch. So we're going to insert our hook into the next stitch, we'll yarn over, and we'll pull our hook through that stitch and through the loop that's around our hook. Next, we're going to get out our scissors, and we're going to grab quite a long yarn tail so that we have enough to sew the hat onto our duck. Once you have enough yarn tail, you're going to trim the tail with your scissors and then you're going to pull your hook through so that you have your hat and then one long piece of yarn tail so you can use to sew onto your duck. And now we've completed crocheting the base of our hat. If you use your brown yarn to crochet a hat for a bear, it should look like this. If we're crocheting the bear hat, we're not going to add any additional details to the base of our hat, so you can move on to crocheting the bear ears. If you've decided to make the froggy hat for your duck, we're going to take a moment to sew on a smile to the hat. Our finished sewed on smile should look like this. So you're going to need your yarn needle your base froggy hat, and also some embroidery thread. So we're going to grab our embroidery thread and we're going to cut a chunk of thread off. 
and then we can set this big piece aside. So now we're going to thread our needle with our embroidery thread. And then we're going to pick up our base hat. Now we're going to want to sew on our smile on row six. So we can count from the top, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we want our smile to be around this area. So we're going to take our needle and we're going to go up through the inside of our base hat. And we're going to pull our needle up through rows five and six. And you can hold this in place with your thumb on the inside. So now you should have a piece of thread coming out of a stitch between rows five and six. So because we're going to want to create a small smile, we're going to insert our needle back through the next stitch, one over. So we're going to pull this through, but before we pull it all the way through, we're going to leave a small loop. Then we're going to take our needle and we're going to insert it up between rows six and seven this time. And we're going to wanna pull it up through this stitch right here. So that stitch is between the two stitches that we have the corners of our smile for. So we're going to have this be the center because it's going to hold the center of the smile in place. So I'll take my needle and I'll insert it up through that center piece. And I'm going to re-thread this. And then I'm going to insert my needle inside of this loop. And pull it through. And that should bring our smile down. So you're going to want to pull this. And that will create our very small froggy smile. So now you're going to insert your needle inside the same stitch that we came out of between rows 6 and 7. So I'm going to insert it back there. And that will just make sure that this smile stays in place because we're securing it at the bottom. So now we've completed sewing on the smile, it's time to unthread our needle and we're going to fasten this off. So you're going to grab the two yarn tails that you had inside the base of your frog hat and we're just going to create a simple knot to secure this in place. And once you've created a knot, we're going to trim the loose ends with our scissors. And if you flip this over, you should see we have completed sewing on the smile to our froggy hat. Next, we're going to crochet the frog eyes for our froggy hat. Our completed frog eye looks like this. You're going to want to make two of these. For row one, we're going to create a magic circle with six single crochets inside. We'll finish off row one and connect the last stitch to our first stitch of our row using a slip stitch. Once we've completed row one, we should have a total of six stitches around. So before we get started, we're going to take note of the rectangle that forms between our pointer finger and our ring finger. So this rectangle here from our top knuckles to our bottom knuckles of our fingers. So we're going to grab our yarn and the tail end of our yarn and we're going to hold it in place with our thumb at the bottom inner corner of our rectangle. We'll grab our yarn and we'll pull it across to the top outer corner of our rectangle diagonally. We'll flip over our fingers and we're going to pull our yarn straight across the top knuckles of our fingers. Flip our hand over again and your yarn should be near the outer bottom corner of our rectangle. So now we're going to take our yarn and we're going to pull it diagonally across to meet the top inner corner of our rectangle. At this point, you should see an X shape formed. We'll turn our hand over again and we'll pull this straight across so that it's parallel to the other yarn that we did earlier. And then we'll flip our hand over again and we're going to take our yarn and place it between our pinky and our ring finger and hold it in place with our thumb. 
At this point, you should see an X shape on the front side of our fingers, and on the back side of our fingers, we should have two parallel lines going across our knuckles. So now we're going to get out our crochet hook and start creating our circle. So you're going to want to insert your hook in the top outer corner of your X. We're going to reach over and hook on to this top inner corner of our X. You'll pull that underneath the other piece of yarn, the top outer corner, and you're going to slightly rotate your hook and point it back upwards. At this point, you should have one loop around your hook. So now we're going to slightly turn our hand so we can see the back side of our fingers, and you're going to hook underneath the inner piece of yarn, and we're going to pull that through the yarn loop that's already around our hook. We'll pull that through. So at this point, we'll have one loop around our hook, and you'll also see a slight knot formed near our hook. So we're going to grab on that knot, and we're going to pull our fingers out of the yarn. So at this point, we'll have our loop, our small knot, we're going to grab our working yarn, which is connected to our yarn ball, and we'll pull that upwards. And you'll see a circle shape and our yarn tail. Pull your yarn tail so that it's not so tangled. And we should double check that we're able to adjust our magic circle. So if you give your yarn tail a small tug, you should see the circle start to close up. And then if you give the circle a small tug back downwards, you should see that it opens up. Okay, so I'm going to get my circle about this big, and at this point we're ready to create our single crochets in our magic circle. So one thing that I like to do, and we've done previously in this tutorial, is create our single crochets around both our circle loop and our yarn tail. So I'm going to hold them and start single crocheting. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull that back up through the circle. I'll have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over and I will pull through to create my first single crochet in my circle. So I'll continue this again. So I'll single crochet another time and continue single crocheting around our circle loop and our yarn tail until we have a total of six stitches in our circle. five and six. So once we have six stitches in your circle, we're going to close our circle. So we'll do that by grabbing our yarn tail and pulling it tight. So if it helps, you can grab onto your stitches and pull this closed. We're going to pull it tight and you'll see that it curled up to form a small circle. So now to finish off row one, we're going to slip stitch to connect this last stitch of our row to the first stitch of our row. So I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch of our row. I'll yarn over and I'm going to pull this through all three loops around my hook. So through that stitch and the other loop that was around my hook. And now we've completed row one and we should have a total of six stitches around. For row two, we're going to increase in each stitch around our circle, so a total of six times. Once we've completed row two, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So to increase, we're going to create two single crochets in each stitch. So I'll insert my hook into the first stitch, and I'm going to create one single crochet. And then I'll insert my hook back into that same stitch and create another single crochet. So that completes our first increase. So I'll continue this increase five more times around our circle. So that is two. That is our third increase. fourth increase, fifth increase, 
And the last one is our sixth increase. Once we've completed row two, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So before we continue, you'll see that my magic circle in the middle opened up a little bit. We're going to pull this tighter so that it completely closes. And once it's more closed, we're going to flip this over and we're going to fasten off this yarn tail. And what I like to do is to create an extra knot when I fasten this off using my yarn needle so that it doesn't open up and it stays secure. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is pulled tight and you're going to thread your needle using your yarn tail and then you're going to insert your needle underneath a nearby stitch. And you can see I pulled through that stitch. I'm going to insert my needle back in that same stitch and I'm going to pull this through but I'm going to stop when I have a very small loop. Then I'm going to insert my needle through that loop and pull this tight to create a knot. And this will just make sure that the yarn tail doesn't loosen up and this magic circle doesn't open up again. Then once that's complete, I'm just going to insert my needle through a few more stitches on this back side of my eye. And I'll get out my scissors and I'll trim this tail off. And that way the tail is just out of our way. So after tightening our circle and cleaning up the tail, it should look like this. For row three, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around our circle. So a total of 12 times. Once we've completed row three, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So we'll single crochet one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And you'll notice that my eye sort of curled upwards a bit. So we're going to curl it back downwards so that the inside of our frog eye is inside and then we have the correct side facing out. So you'll want to make sure that the part with the yarn tail is on the inside and then the part without the yarn tail from earlier is on the outside. Once you've completed row three, you should have a total of 12 stitches around. Next, we're going to finish off our eye with a slip stitch. So we'll insert our hook into the next stitch, we'll yarn over, and we'll pull that through all of the loops around our hook. Now we're going to take this time to fasten off our yarn tail. So grab your scissors and you're going to leave enough amount of yarn so that you can sew onto your frog hat. And then we're going to trim this and then we'll take our hook and we'll pull this through and we'll have a nice long tail for sewing onto our frog hat. So once you've completed the crocheting piece of our frog eye, it should look like this. Now it's time to attach the safety eyes onto our frog eye. You're going to need a pair of six millimeter safety eyes. Grabbing the safety eye, you're going to insert the eye in between rows two and three of our eye. So we're going to insert it there and push until it is all the way in. Then you're going to grab the safety eye backing and you're going to secure this safety eye into place using the backing. So you're gonna give this a good push on And now we've completed the first eye for our frog hat. You're going to want to make sure you make two of these. Next, we're going to crochet the ears for our bear hat using our brown yarn. This is what a finished ear looks like. You're going to want to crochet two of these. 
For row one, we're going to create a magic circle with five single crochets inside. We'll finish this off with a slip stitch to connect the last stitch of our row to the first stitch of our row. Once we've completed row one, we should have a total of five stitches around. So to get started, we're going to take note of the rectangle that forms between our bottom knuckles and our top knuckles of our ring finger and our pointer finger. We'll grab our yarn tail and we'll hold our tail end in place on our bottom inner corner of our rectangle. We'll grab the working yarn and we'll stretch it diagonally across to meet the top outer corner of our rectangle. We'll flip our hand over and we're going to pull our yarn straight across the top knuckles of our fingers. Then we're going to flip our hand over again and our yarn should be at the outer bottom corner of our rectangle. We'll take this yarn and we'll pull it diagonally across to meet the top inner corner of our rectangle. We'll flip our hand over again and we'll pull this straight across our bottom knuckles of our fingers. Flip our hand over once more and we're going to hold this piece of yarn in place where our thumb is between our pinky and our ring finger. At this point, you should have an X formed on the front of your fingers and then two parallel lines on the back of your fingers. So now we're going to grab our crochet hook and we're going to insert it underneath the top outer corner of our X. We'll hook across to get the top inner corner of our X and we're going to pull that underneath the top outer corner and we're going to twist our hook back upwards so that we have a loop around our hook. Next, we're going to rotate our hands slightly so that we can see the back of our fingers. We'll take our hook and we'll hook onto the piece of yarn that's closest to our palm and our knuckles on our hand. We'll pull this through the loop that's already on our hook. And now you'll see that a small knot has formed next to our hook. So we're going to grab that and we'll pull our fingers out from the circle. So now you can see that we have one loop around our hook. We'll grab our working yarn and we'll pull that up top here so it's ready to crochet. And then you should be able to find your yarn tail and there's a loop here as well. So we're going to detangle our yarn tail and we can test out our magic circle by pulling our yarn tail and we should see it start to close. And then if we pull the opposite way on our loop, our circle, we should see it open up a bit. So I'm going to have my loop about this big and now we can start creating the five single crochets inside of this magic circle. So like we have previously in this tutorial, I'm going to create my single crochets around both the yarn tail and the loop of my circle. So we're going to insert our hook into the circle, we'll yarn over, pull that back up through the circle, we'll have two loops around our hook, yarn over and pull through to create our first single crochet. So I'm going to keep creating single crochets until I have a total of five single crochets. This is our fourth and our fifth. So we can see one, two, three, four, five. So once you have five single crochets, we're going to grab our yarn tail again and we're going to hold on to our stitches and we'll close this loop by pulling on our yarn tail. So pull it tight and our stitches should curl up to form a circular shape. So what we're going to do now is slip stitch to connect the last stitch of our row to the first stitch of our row. So I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch. I'll yarn over and I'll pull that through the stitch itself and the loop that's on my hook. Once you've completed row one, you should have a total of five stitches around. For row two, we're going to increase in each stitch around our circle, so a total of five times. Once we've completed row two, we should have a total of 10 stitches around. So I'm going to increase by creating two single crochets in each stitch. So that's our first increase. So we have our second increase, our third increase, our fourth increase, and our fifth increase. Once 
Once you've completed row two, you should have a total of 10 stitches around. Before we continue with our ears, we're going to secure our magic circle with our yarn tail. So I'm going to flip my magic circle so I can see the back side where my yarn tail is coming out of the circle. I'm going to pull this tight, then I'm going to grab this tail and get out my yarn needle, and I'll thread the needle with the tail. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to hook underneath a stitch right near where my yarn tail comes out. So I'll stick that all the way through. And then I'm going to insert my needle back underneath that same stitch we just went under. And I'm going to pull this but not all the way. I'm going to leave a small loop there. So next I'm going to insert my needle back through that loop and pull and this will create a knot. And I want to make sure that I have a nice tight knot that way our magic circle will stay secure and it won't open up or expand as we finish our duck. So next I'm just going to insert my needle underneath a few stitches just to hide the yarn tail. And I'll pull this through. Then I'm going to get out my scissors and I'm going to trim my yarn tail so you can't see it anymore. And now we've cleaned up our yarn tail and secured our magic circle and we can continue crocheting our ears. For row three, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around our circle. So a total of 10 stitches. Once we've completed row three, we should have a total of 10 stitches around. So I'm just going to single crochet in each of the 10 stitches around my circle. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And you'll notice that my ear started curling up and this was the back side of our ear, so we're just going to flip it so that that is on the inside. The nice part of our ear is showing outwards. Once you've completed row 3, you should have a total of 10 stitches around. For row 4, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around our circle, so a total of 10 times. Once we've completed row 4, we should have a total of 10 stitches around. So again, I'm just going to single crochet 10 times. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Once you've completed row four, you should have a total of 10 stitches around and your ear should look like this. Now we're going to fasten off our yarn and leave a tail for sewing the ear onto our hat. Before we do that, I'm just going to slip stitch in the next stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook, I'll yarn over, and I'll pull that through that stitch and the loop around my hook. Then I'm going to get out my scissors and I'm going to leave a tail for sewing. I'll trim the tail and then I'll grab my crochet hook and I'll just pull this out and we should be left with our ear and a long tail for sewing onto our hat. So the next thing you can do just to prepare it for sewing is we're actually going to have this be flat so you can squish it down so you have your yarn tail coming out of one end of your ear. And now we've completed crocheting the ear for our bear hat. You're going to want to make two of these. So now it's time to sew the animal hats onto our duck. We're going to get started by sewing our hat base to our duck's head. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use the frog hat, but if you decided to make a bear hat for your tutorial, you're going to sew that on during this step. So first I'm going to grab the cap and I'm going to place it on my duck. If you're using the bear hat, you don't have to be as precise, but if you decided to make the frog hat, you want to align the mouth with the mouth of the duck. 
And then if you want to make sure that it's extra secure and doesn't move around, you can grab some sewing pins and also put a couple around the hat just to keep it in place. I'm just gonna put a couple here in the front so that this mouth doesn't move around too much while I'm sewing. So now I'm going to grab my yarn tail and my yarn needle and I'm going to thread my needle. And we're basically just going to sew all the way around this edge so that we can secure the hat into place. And one thing that you'll notice that I'll do is I'll skip a few stitches during my sewing and that's just because I feel like it's not necessary to weave in and out of every single stitch. I think your hat can still be secure by securing just a handful of stitches around the hat. So I'm going to take my yarn needle and insert my needle in the next stitch and then I'm going to come out that stitch. And then, like we've been doing with our sewing throughout this video, I'm going to hook underneath a stitch opposite of where this tail is coming out onto the body so that we can secure this to the body. So I'll hook onto this stitch and I'll pull this through and that will connect the hat to the body in that area right here. So now that I'm through, I'm going to go back up the next stitch and I'll pull that through. And now I'm going to insert my hook down through this stitch. And here I'm still going to want to place my needle right across from where this yarn tail comes out. But I'm going to insert it and I'm going to skip a few stitches here and pull my needle up through this stitch. So I'll skip a few and I'll pull my yarn needle up through there and I will give this a good tug. And then I'm going to insert my needle back through the next stitch. And I'm going to insert it in the body right across from where my tail came out and I will go one stitch over. And then I'll pull it back up through this stitch. That's right across from where we just were in the body. And now that I've sewn a few of these stitches in a row, I'm going to insert my needle in the next stitch. And then I'm going to take some of these pins out, give me enough room. And then I'm going to insert my needle in the stitch across from where this tail is. And instead of coming out here, I'm just going to come out around the front of my hat a few stitches over and this just saves on some sewing and your hat is still pretty secure so then i'm going to sew across a few of these stitches so i'll insert my needle through the next stitch and then across from where this is and i'll pull that through and then i'm going to go back up through the next stitch and over one stitch and then I'm going to insert my needle through the stitch on the body that is just across from where this tail came out and I'm going to skip a few stitches so I'll take my sewing pin out and I will Go over a few stitches until I'm about here, and I'll give this a good tug. And then I will insert my yarn needle into the next stitch of the hat. I'll find the stitch on the body that's across from that yarn tail that we just came out from, and I will pull that through. I'll insert my needle up through the next stitch and pull that through so now i'll go into the very next stitch so I'll insert my needle through that of the hat and then i'm going to insert my needle inside the body across from where we just came out and i'm going to skip a few stitches here and come out over here and I'll pull this through and then I will insert my needle into the next stitch 
and I'll insert my needle into the next stitch of the body and pull that through. Then I will insert my needle in the next stitch of the hat, pull that through, and I'll go into the next stitch of the hat again. And then I will go into the next stitch of our body. And for this one, I'm just going to come back out right around here, which is close to where we started sewing the hat. So I'll come back out here. And so I'll pull that. And then I'm going to insert my needle in the next stitch of the hat. And then I'm going to insert it in the opposite stitch of our body. So I'll come out over here. And now instead of coming back up, I'm just going to secure my yarn, knot it off, and then trim off my tail. So I will try to find kind of a place where I can keep this a little bit hidden. So I'll lift this up a little bit, and I'm just going to hook onto a stitch on this hat. You can also hook onto a stitch of the body, whichever is your preference. And I'm just going to pull this a little bit. I'll get my yarn tail out, and before I close this loop, I'm going to insert my needle back through the loop, pull this to create just a small knot, and once that's secured, you're going to insert your needle right where that knot was created, so close to there, and you're going to come out the opposite side of your duck. So this is going to be near the front side, and you're going to pull this, and then you're going to trim this yarn tail off. And then you can push this little end in here to hide it. So now we've completed sewing the froggy hat onto our deck. If you decided that you wanted to make the bear hat, you can take this time to follow the same steps that we used to sew the froggy hat onto our deck to sew the bear hat onto your deck. Now we're going to finish off our duck with frog hat by sewing the frog eyes onto our deck. So first you're going to want to grab your frog eyes and I think the best thing to do is to place them on your frog and see where you like them. Then you can use some sewing pins to pin them in place. And then we're going to start sewing them onto our deck. So I actually like to place my eyes maybe about two stitches away from the mouth and one stitch below the mouth. So I want this bottom of the eye to start one stitch below the mouth. I think that's really cute. So I'm going to hold the eyes in place here. So I'm going to just pin these in place. So once you're happy with the placement of the eyes, we're going to start sewing the eyes onto our deck. So you're going to want to get out your yarn needle and we will start by threading our needle with our yarn tail of our eye. And one thing to notice is we're not going to stuff the eye. These eyes are really small. There's not much extra space in there now that we added the safety eye. So I tend to not stuff these eyes, but if you decided to make a larger plushie, so something like this, if you used larger yarn and a larger crochet hook, then you might want to stuff the eyes a little bit just so they're not flat. So let's continue sewing this on. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew around each stitch around this eye. So we'll insert our needle just across from where this yarn tail is, so a piece of the hat. I'm going to hook onto that and go one stitch over. You can see I have one stitch over and I'll pull my yarn through there and then I'm going to insert my needle in the next stitch of the eye. So we'll look at this one. This is the next stitch and I'm going to pull that tight. And as we sew this eye on, I'm just going to continue to look at where the placement is just in case the eye starts to droop down. So make sure that you're always checking back on this eye to make sure that it doesn't misalign from what you envisioned. So I'm going to take this 
pin out. Once I've done that, I'm going to insert my needle across to the other side of the hat. So this is a little bit different from how we sewed on this hat and how we sewed on the feet where we kept going back and forth and moving over one. This one we're just going to keep wrapping around. So I'll insert my needle across there and then I'll go back up through this next stitch. Then I'll go back across to hook onto a piece of the hat. And then I'll come back up to grab the piece of the eye that's right across from where my yarn tail is coming out from the hat. And then I'm going to insert my needle back underneath this next stitch to close these two together. Then I'll come up into this next stitch on the eye and I will continue this. So I'll go into the hat one stitch and then I'll go back up through the eye one stitch. And then I can take my pin out and I will go under the hat one stitch and then back up through the eye that's across from where this yarn needle came out and our yarn tail is so that will connect those two pieces together and I'll just keep going around this eye until I've reached the end we are almost done. So now you can see that I'm nearing the very end of sewing this eye on. So I'm going to insert my needle through the body. I'm going to go up one stitch. And I'm going to pull this through this last stitch that I have yet to sew. And then I'm going to pull this back through to that same stitch because now I'm just trying to find an area that would be good for fastening off. So now I'm going to fasten this off by tying a knot using one of the stitches that we have. So I'm going to go underneath this stitch with my needle. I'm going to pull this through and before pulling all the way, I'm going to insert my needle back through the loop, pull this tight, and that should create a nice little knot that we'll fasten off with. Then I'm going to take my needle, I'm going to insert it into the hat, I'm going to insert it outside of the duck's body, and I'm going to give this a nice tug, and I will hold this and trim this off using my scissors. So now we've completed sewing our first frog eye onto our frog hat. Now you're going to follow those same steps to sew the second frog eye onto the hat. Once you've completed sewing on both frog eyes to your frog hat, your hat is complete. And congratulations, your duck is also complete. Thank you so much for following this tutorial. I really appreciate all of your support. If you decided to crochet the duck with bear hat, let's go to the next step to complete that one too. Next, we're going to sew on our bear ears to our bear hat so that we can complete our duck with bear hat amigurumi. So we're going to get out our ears and we're going to grab some sewing pins and we're going to pin these in place so that we know where we want them when we're sewing. So one thing that I like to do is I like to find the center. So this first circle here at the top of our hat and I like to move a few rows forward and I also like to place my ear right about here so this is one, two, three, four stitches down from the center, and that leaves about one row that's not attached to the ear at the bottom. So once I like that placement, I'm going to pin this in place, and then I'll pin the other side into place as well. And then I'm going to take my other ear, and I'm also going to place it around the same area. So we're going to count one, two, three, four. So right around here, so I'm going to grab some pins and pin this in place. And 
and you're going to want to adjust it so that it matches the placement of the other ear. So once you are happy with that placement, we're going to start sewing on both of these ears. And I'll show you how to sew the first one and then you'll just repeat the same steps to sew the second ear on. So first I'm going to thread my yarn needle. And then I'm going to insert my yarn needle right at the first stitch about here. So where this top edge of the ear meets the hat. So I'll pull this through and secure that. And once we have our first loop, I'm just going to take this off so that we can continue sewing and it's not in the way. So now that I have that, I'm going to insert my needle through this stitch here. And I'm going to come out the opposite side around this first stitch as well. And I'm going to pull that through. And then I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to find the next stitch on the hat. So one down, that's right across from where these stitches come out. So I'm going to insert my needle through there, and it's just going to go across one stitch. And I'll give that a good pull, and then I'll follow that same strategy of inserting my needle over one more stitch and out through the opposite side. And I'll pull that, and then I will insert my needle one space down on the hat and i'll pull that through so we're just joining 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 and joining all of these stitches so that the ear connects to the hat so once i've done that and i've come back up through the hat we're going to insert our needle through the next stitch on the ear and out the other side and then we're going to Take our pin out if you still have one in. So I'll actually be able to show you a little bit better when we insert our needle to grab a piece of the hat. We do that like so. And we've got one stitch across. And then we're going to insert our needle one stitch over on our ears and out the opposite side. And we're going to give that a tug. So I'm going to insert my needle one more over in the hat, so one stitch of the hat side. And then I'm going to insert my needle through the next stitches of the ear and pull that through. Then I notice that I've reached the end of where I want the ear to be. So I'm going to insert my needle back through that same stitch that we just came out of and I'm going to give that a tug and then I'm going to insert my needle just through this edge here so that we can connect the very edge of the ear to the hat and then I'm going to pull this through into the hat so that it just connects this ear part back down to the hat and I'm going to come up close to where our edge of our ear meets our hat and then we can fasten this off. So I'll pull this up through. Next, I'll just hook on to a stitch and we're going to pull this through, but not all the way. We'll leave a loop so that we can insert our needle back through the loop and pull to secure a small knot. Then once we've tightened up our knot, we're going to insert our needle through the body of our duck and out the opposite end. We're going to give that a pull and then we're going to trim this yarn tail with our scissors. And now we've completed sewing on our first bear ear to our bear hat. Once you've completed sewing the first bear ear onto your bear hat, you're going to follow the same steps to sew the second bear ear onto your bear hat. Once you've finished sewing both bear ears onto your bear hat, your duck with bear hat amigurumi is complete. So here's a final look at both amigurumi ducks. Congratulations on completing your duck with animal hat amigurumi. There are a lot of steps for this one, so be proud of yourself for finishing it. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this from me, please subscribe to my channel. And let me know in the comment section below which hat you decided to make for your duck. Have a wonderful day and happy crocheting!